In the small, remote South Pacific island of Pentecost in the Vanuatu archipelago, men prove their courage by jumping into space. Their survival depending solely on the vines tied to their ankles. For the children of Bunlap village, the first land diving, or Nagol, is a major step on the road to becoming a man. In Bunlap, it's time to look for vines. Amongst all the different varieties that grow on Pentecost, only one has the strength and the elasticity capable of breaking the jumper's fall. The jumper's survival depends on the quality of the vine. Children cannot choose for themselves. They must follow their elders' instructions. <laughs> Two vines are needed to jump. They have to be fairly identical. Their length must correspond to the height of the jump. Their thickness has to be in proportion to the weight of the individual. Warisus and the other men's vines will weigh about 40 kilograms each, and those of the children barely 15 kilograms. <laughs> Before setting up the vines, each jumper must build his own jumping board. This is called building one's gol. <laughs> Sally and Telkan build their goals at the level of the tower's legs. This work requires some precision. Each piece of wood must be chosen for a specific function. Some have to resist the shock of the jump, 
while others have to break to absorb part of the energy at the moment the vines extend to break the jumper's fall. Wabak wants to erase the memory of his previous failure, and so he has taken up the challenge of jumping from the belly of the tower. <laughs> Up above, not very evenly balanced, but perfectly at ease, Warisus sets up his vines. <laughs> Twenty meters separate him from Sally and Warisu's own son, Telkan. Twenty meters represents ten years of jumping for the bravest of the men. The vines are now adjusted and cut to the right length, taking into account their probable stretching during the jump. It's a delicate operation. For a jump to be truly successful, the head has to graze the soft earth, but no more than that. Finally, the extremity of each vine is peeled into thin strips to be attached to the jumper's ankles. <laughs> Sally is right. It is a great Nagol. A final leap of 30 meters, 56 jumpers leaping from all levels of the tower, and more than 200 male and female dancers to encourage them. Today is truly an exceptional day. Telkan is the first to go. But the youngster hesitates. Telkan finally jumped, but whose hand was that helping him? Could it have been his father, concerned about the family's prestige? It's Sally's turn to get on his goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
Sally succeeds as well. He has finally found his place amongst the jumpers. He may not show it, but he is very proud and very happy. The man who just injured himself was not a beginner. He had built his board 12 meters high, just alongside that of Wabak, enough to make the young man think for too long. Wabak was lucky. His vines weren't very good, but he is still standing, and he deserves the critical congratulations of his family. Telkan, Sally, and Wabak have accomplished their goal. Dancing with the men is their reward. The tension mounts as the men dive from the highest points of the tower. They say that if a diver refuses to jump at the last minute, nobody will make fun of him. And yet... <laughs> he is immediately replaced since all the goals have to be used so as not to impede those who follow. Contrary to what people in Bunlap claim, some have died jumping. It's a taboo subject, however, since invoking the dead can attract misfortune. Warare is delighted to have jumped from the left shoulder. Bebe Ware, who is not afraid of the space, jumps the right shoulder.
for the head jump has arrived. The atmosphere is intense. Warisus gathers up all his strength. Telkan dreams of being like his father. 